Okay. Let's see if I can explain this right. So, got a total of 13 coins. So, the standard's always been pretty commonly that the majority is copper. Um, and then adding zinc brings it into uh, a brass color. Uh, a nickel co coating uh, basically is optional. So all these are, I don't know, uh, I haven't looked up the details, let's say like 98% copper. And then they've got um, zinc added into them, which gives them uh, the brass tinge to it, which protects the copper from um, eroding. So this one is in the best condition. It's a 2000 version. This one's another 2000 version. And what you can clearly see is the wear and tear difference. You can plainly see the copper. Okay, so it's not getting... Well, at least in 2000, it wasn't getting manufactured correctly. There wasn't enough space left to get the sides. So, no big deal, but it makes a pain in the butt to clean it, and then you, you lose the finish. But with the uh, all the market manipulation going between countries... The standard's gotten quite off the chain, that's for sure. So looking at re rebooting it, because you've got many other uh, third world countries that have to deal with obviously the same problem. Um, this should have been bronze. It should have never jumped to silver. So you got ages in time. Of discovery so your copper and your bronze and then your silver so there definitely has to be a, a complete revision of um, trade relationships so 13 coins total the stack should be 10 before you would jump to the next conversion now bronze isn't worth that much to be stacking tens but maybe it is uh, I'm not a mathematician neither do I know the quantity of resources available uh, for countries so for sure this needs to become a solid bronze and the let's say a 90 90 to 10 as an example uh, for the copper with a nickel, the yeah, nickel coat option, which is what these ones already are, before you actually get to a silver piece. So I'll pull this out because it's not silver, but that should make a better understanding of the concept of what cryptocurrency is trying to get to. But the only thing they've got accomplished so far is they're using 100% copper. So there's pros and cons to that, but for solid value, it's better to go with copper, 100% um, copper, because there's really no manipulation of the market, because there's no mixing options. Now, you get somebody smart in the Treasury office, to actually, uh, the U.S. Treasury actually um, do something about the currency instead of um, not doing much of anything. None of these coins are registered. They're just uh, mass-produced because there's no serial number on them. Uh, the only way you can identify that they're authentic is by uh, the year stamping and the uh, place that they were made, uh, which is usually the capital marking. Um, but 
but they all do say, you know, one dollar or they've got a stamping of one dollar. So commonly, everybody in the United States knows that as being an authentic dollar. Uh, different years vary. This is 1979. This is a 1980, but they have the same. Well, I guess I can't say they have the same backing. There's a slight. No, it's the exact same. get better quite a bad reflection of the light there we go so moving forward with a project I'm doing the finishing touches on it and what I want to point out is when I'm dealing with this district that doesn't have a clue what they're doing is that uh they're ignoring the rights of minors under the age 13. So there's a different legal bracket for them, and they totally disregarded them completely. So uh, uh, in a sense, it's almost like kind of taking you by force. Um, but it wouldn't be force if uh, no harm or damage uh, or loss, I guess, uh, is occurred so that that part I want to I guess explain to you or disclose to you um, okay and so we're, since we're getting in like real technical stuff uh, I, na I numbered the other page as one, and this one as two. Normally when I do motions, uh, I'll number them up here for the sequence. So this one's just uh, pretty much uh, open free trade relationship. I'll just put it that way. So I got all my enterprise information filled out. Uh, I still can't put a physical address because... Uh, uh, catch 22, I guess you call it. Um, now, past physical year, I put this in here just because um, it's pretty much a common state standard that if you lapse uh, paying the $10 fee to register your entity, um, like mine, it went dormant for, oh, uh, geez, what, four? Yeah, four years, something like that. Um, but it was still reserved. Um, whether somebody attempted to use the business name, I don't know. I don't. I, I've never dug into it that much. But I think that was a warning that was disclosed that if you failed to maintain the registry of it, then somebody could come along and go, "Oh, I want that enterprise uh, name and so forth like that." Anyway, mine, my last address hadn't changed from the registration, so it's not hard. It wasn't hard for them to update it uh, or verify it. Um, since I'm a sole proprietorship, I make sure I fill in all my information here. And this is basically what I'm going to have my stamp look like. I don't know if I can get into the technicalities that it, it has a, a lower adjustable uh, roller bar, basically. So I can adjust the, the date and the time when it's actually done. That's one good thing that this district court has done is at least they've put the time stamping on the clerk's end so I can tell the difference between what the DA is falsifying and what is actually uh, a legal court stamping. Outside that, they don't have any of this. None of them are registered. Uh, it's an absolute joke down here. Um, the statute needs to be in here. So, for example, if it was a notary uh, registered with the state rather than uh, a private entity as an enterprise as myself, um, if they were working under uh, a bank, then it would be that bank's name, the law. Um, the notary's issued identity, um, that person's 
full name because the law does say complete. Um, I just sign it as I normally sign it for, for my name. And then the date is uh, another statutory requirement, but it doesn't get into the time. But the time is necessary because if you're doing more than one document every day, then you're going to have to have a, uh, a time on here because this document is your critical document you have to save. I think it's under Colorado Rule 11. I'll have to double check. Uh, Colorado Rule Civil Procedure, I'm sorry, 11. It says something to the effect that um, a copy has to be maintained, which is crazy that uh, the judicial court had to add a rule detail that actually should have been in the statute. So there's a lot of development still going on with the state, unfortunately. Um, and then if there's ever a dispute uh, between me and Taylor reg regarding the development of basically paper, um, uh, white paper is uh, what the common term is going around for um, non U.S. currency paper, which cards basically same effect. That's uh, pretty common. Uh, and she wants a challenge like on um, how we're going about on the Coinbase conversion. Then this already exists. So if it, it went into court and got challenged or you want to solidify it more, um, this is already attached to it. So I maintain this copy, uh, as if it, I had my own notary book and this would be that day's transaction. Um, I haven't read fully into law of like the details, whether the other section section page has to be attached, but it implies that, uh, it would be because it's being kind of taken as an affidavit and, uh, in a sense, because it's a written statement. Um, it, but it has a, a picture of the details of it, so um, it's a little bit m more of a thorough affidavit. This um, not basically self-authenticates or notarizes uh, the party that's doing it. Um, you've already got... Yeah, part oh no you've got two parts of your name on it so that that makes it clear enough of the unsolicited partnership I should put it that way so I'll leave it at that and let you chew on that for a while